Hello, Warriors. Good BOE day. Bank of England should be coming out here shortly. I'd also like to welcome our trading warrior brothers and sisters viewing us on investing.com today. Welcome to FACE, Forex Analytics Community Experience. So I'm sure we're going to get the word on the BOE. Blake, feel free to interrupt me. Anything, if you get any news. I just Good wanted morning. to cover the Good end. Good morning. What's that, Steve? Hi, Steve. We, we, we got a hike with seven to two votes. Uh, the initial response is negative, as you see, for the pound. Okay, thank you, Steve. All right, so uh, we'll get to the pound uh, on the coverage. In fact, Greg had uh, had it peaking earlier last week. I want to show Greg's chart here. Uh, last Friday, uh, called out a scalp on a three drive here. It was a pretty good trade. My assumption coming into this week was that we'd have a failing rally on a fib retracement to short. Uh, it stretched almost to new highs, and this is an advantage I have uh, being able to have the research and the technical work of the Forex Analytics team at my fingertips. Uh, Steve Volge also mentioned he thought we'd head up towards this 115 level, so the path of least resistance for right now. Good morning, John and Patrick is to the upside, not going to fight it, especially uh, the NFP is tomorrow. So we get a strong employment number. Maybe that's what takes a yen to complete D up here. Everyone with me? Give me a Y. So uh, the trade of the week for me so far that I'm still alive in was calling ashore in Euro Swiss up around the 61.8 level that it was rejected yesterday, traded a little bit above it, now it's underneath it. Uh, still my contention that we could get one of these waves to the downside from here. Uh, it's gonna start looking negative to me back under these lows right here around, call it 162.20, 162.30. So we'll Pound see if it's under. Below the triangle. Excuse me? Uh, but the, the pound is breaking below the, um, the technical triangle we had. The, we did get a hike, but the hike is rather dovish. Yeah. Because right, we ruined the uptrend. Up. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right, so here's another advantage of Forex Analytics. Let me, just, let me just show you guys this. So I brought it up in the session yesterday. And Dale, I, I'll, I'll be able to chime in now. I had to send out an update on uh, on Forex Analytics. We we are approaching uh, pretty pretty key support here. Go ahead, buddy. Uh, here, let me go ahead and grab the um, let me grab the chart. Right I was here. I was just going to brag about Greg I had the call right on the pound. He showed it completing here this week. So uh, nice call by him. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, so here's the here's the pound. So th there was some, a lot of dovish commentary that came out after the fact. Um, they they see growth forecasts coming down. They see considerable risk to Brexit. So even though they made a hike, the pound really has come under pressure. Um, the the vote was seven to two, which is uh, it was seen as is you know fairly positive. But at the same time, um, you know that that was like a that was a, a you know the the dovish. Uh, or excuse me, the hawkish part of it. But the thing is all the commentary that came out afterwards. Now, as you can see, the pound just slumped to, um, you know, this is this is really, a, in my opinion, key support, because if you look at the longer term here, this is the daily, you yeah. can see this is, a, this is a very symmetrical triangle. So we're, we're near the channel support, we're near a lot of support down here. Um, so, you know, what happens from here is gonna be, very, very important, uh, you know, to the pound. I mean, the pound's really got it. And now, remember, Carney is also speaking in a, in, in in about uh, in about uh, 25 minutes or so. So, uh, if you were short the pound, you got to be really careful because now we've pivoted off 131. Um, you know, we could very easily see a bounce back at this at this stage in at this stage in the game. Uh, also, I want to take a look at the pound yen because the pound yen actually came right down to, you can see this is trend line support through here. And we're, we're closing in, you know, but basically came to like trend line support. I mean, that's the way we got to look at it. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other pound pairs as well. So here's the pound Aussie. 
the pound Aussie at slump right through support mm -hmm. as well. Okay. May, uh, um, may I tip my hat to you, Blake, on your covering of your short and euro pound uh, for a nice profit before oh, the thanks. second? Off the 200-day move, moving average, yeah, thank you. I mean, really, uh, really great cover, or should I say lucky? You were you were very lucky, man. Well, You're lucky. A 200-day moving average, it, 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 the, usually on the first test, it's going to yeah. be unsuccessful. Um, yeah. That's what I've found. And so, you know, it's great right out. Thanks. It, uh, it, and it's too bad I didn't stay long. I actually got, I, I actually took a counter trend long yesterday and I got limited out like relatively quickly. And then, you know, now, now you know, we've bounced back. And what's going to be really interesting here because this has squeezed out a lot of um, Euro yeah. pound shorts. What'll be really interesting is if we come back below 88.50. Uh, a little bit later, and if we get if we get back below 88.50, then you know we're going to be in a situation where we have taken out everybody on both sides of the market. So, um, and I don't know if that's necessarily going to happen, but I think it's something that we should pay attention to, especially with Carney speaking here uh, shortly. Uh, so, you know, the pound is obviously under pressure, but you know, again, we're we're still within the confines of our our range. Um, of our of, of our trading range here you can see where you know we're we've got this this range that i've i've outlined uh between 133 and 131 or so and we're, we're just you know on the lower end of it uh let's take a look uh sorry I, I, there was other pound pairs that we we're going to take a look at here's the pound canadian so the pound canadian really buckled under some pressure here and we're back at the neckline of the inverted head and shoulder pattern. So, well, not not quite at it, but we're we're close. Uh, pound New Zealand, pound New Zealand as well. I mean, this is right at the neckline of this uh, of this um, um, uh, big cup and handle pattern, or you know the breakout point, which by the way probably isn't a bad place to to to, to look for longs, especially from a risk reward perspective. If you want to if you want to pick up the you know the pound pound New Zealand and you know have a i don't know 100 pip stop but you know in these you have to have you know much wider stops you need to have a 100 pip stop and looking for like a three 400 pip gain that type of that type of trade matter of fact it's already starting to bounce here um you, you know it, and the thing about the cable and i have to point this out it, it really just probably just push stops everywhere and if anybody who was long the pound going into the Bank of England probably just got stopped out, all right? You know, yeah. if they were long, they just got stopped out, and there's probably some people that triggered in some shorts, you know, with this move. And I think we still have to be very careful. I think there's there's a lot more to go with Mark Carney coming in, and uh, he's going to be he's going to be talking in about uh, about. 12 minutes or so so very exciting price action with the with, with the pound uh itself just re just realize we are very much in and confined in our uh in our range for right now okay um i think you got to be real careful about getting too super aggressive at this at this point in time um but let's go back over to this euro pound really quick yeah that look euro pound i mean look at look at how it probably just whacked anybody Anybody short probably had stops right here, right? Mm -hmm. This previous support, current resistance, we blasted through it, so all these stops got just walloped. They got taken out. So now that you got all the you know shorts out of the market, has the has the market you know freed itself up to 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 really you know move? So, Blake. Good good morning, mate. Good morning, Steve. Hi, Steve. Uh, I, I'm I'm inclined to doubt that Carney is going to help the pound. We, yeah, we, we, we might see a reaction higher afterwards, but knowing Carney, uh, you know, I, I don't find it easily that you know he's going to give more of a hawkish message than the initial reception of the market. Uh, at least, not his usual style. You're right. That's a that's a good that's a good um that's a good comment also but also knowing that um that he could very easily um 
you know, he, he could very easily uh, uh, look at the reaction of the pound and and tailor his uh, commentary towards that. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, Might no, be. Yeah, yes, I hear Stelios chiming in. Yeah, no, no, I was just going to say I agree with that. You know what central bankers are uh, are like. They... Uh, they like to keep the uh, you know the waters calm and then you know uh, then they don't want to create too many um, you know too much volatility and stuff. So you know there is a chance. I I personally was a little bit disappointed by how like pessimistic the uh, the commentary was again and again and they keep they keep saying the same things even though the the British economy okay we've said it a million times it's doing it's doing okay. You know, there, there's a big uncertainty uh, regarding Brexit, but it's still doing all right. Inflation is going high. And, you know, if they're hiking to, to try to fight inflation, will one hike do the trick? Of course not. It will do nothing, really. So uh, it's a bit disappointing to see them so cautious. But then again, this is Carney, like you guys said, and this is the way he is. So, so yeah, let's name one central banker still that wants a higher currency of whatever yeah, the country they're representing. That's very good question. I can't name any. Yeah, I don't know any. <laughs> so, so Stelius, what do you, when 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 you have when you have uh, you know Mark Carney, who's going to be on the wires here very shortly, um, do you think, um, based on your experience and living in London and being you know being a market maker, and do you, do you, do you think? But because we've watched Carney, I mean Carney is he's he's like he's extremely dovish. He's been a, he's been. Uh, a, Pretty, pretty dovish, but he also talks on, out of both sides of his mouth sometimes. And yes. so, is, is it is it possible that um, that that he will, you know, tailor his commentary to the uh, to the to the to moves that we just saw in the markets? Yes, I, I think it's possible, and it reflects what central bankers have become in the last few years. I remember. Um, uh, uh, Mervyn King and Eddie George before that, they were they were quite a bit they were a bit more different. Nowadays they they try to smooth things over. So I think you're right. He might try to tailor his his wording and the way he addresses everything, looking at the the reaction so far. But as Steve said, I agree. I don't think he's going to say anything terribly hawkish. There's, there's no way at this point. But uh, it might be quite neutral. So let's see how it goes. I'm yeah. a bit disappointed, I must say. Yeah, I know. I, you've 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 been a you've been a um, you know a, a pound um, bull and one and and you know myself. I mean, I was expecting them to be a little bit more hawkish as well because I I think that uh, they they have to lift rates off of this this floor, but but also gear the market for for higher rates. But um, you know, Brexit is obviously a very big issue for the UK, and it's something that's going to weigh heavily on. Um, the UK economy until they can get past uh, the negotiation process, um, okay. which you know can still st still span out, you know, uh, a couple of years. So, yeah, no, that's that's fair. It's a fair point. And Brexit is an uncertainty, but again, it's already brought you know 15% roughly of depreciation. So it's you no, know, it's not a small move so far. <laughs> so yeah. the market's pricing already a lot. If you look at um, futures, they're pricing. Less than one more hike in 2018. I think it's like 75% chance of a hike in 2018. So the more this drops, the more again it starts looking like a good trade to be long sterling on a risk reward basis. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, and and and, uh, and again, I I look at the sterling here. You know, uh, this 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 big. I've been following this big formation for a while. Um, you know, we are obviously as we approach any type of major technical hurdle like in this case would be if, if we're if we're talking symmetry we've got a very symmetrical triangle but we happen to be at the very low end of the of the triangle so I mean if we break um, you know the euro the the pound dollar could you know quite easily be trading back in the mid 120s you know and it, it's it, it is at this stage in the game is quite possible and and you know one of the other things that I that I look at from a technical perspective Stelios is you take some of these cross rates you take like the pound Aussie okay you know the pound Aussie that there's broken a multi-year trend line you know will this end up being just a false breakout uh, you got the pound New Zealand which is also you know uh, we had this big cup and handle pattern um, 
And yep. you know, will this end up being a big false breakout as well? And then the pound Canadian, you know, is is another one here that that could set up for a false breakout. And and you know, you can't you can't you can't uh, ignore that with the with the pound. I mean, that could that could send the pound uh, across the board much lower. I mean, here's the here's the euro pound, a great example of you know we broke this uh, this this you know big trend line here. And now we're we're back we're back above you know above the trend line. Now it's there's still a lot of time left in the day, but you know it's not looking good for the cable at this stage in the game. Yeah, I I, I agree. We need to see how price continues today. I am personally long sterling kiwi, as I have tweeted in the, you know in the past from quite a bit below, but it's now at support like in 190-ish. I, I make it the, the support level. So I'm if it if it breaks below convincingly, I'm gonna just take take the profits and and close it. But, yeah, uh, I, I yeah I, I don't know. I still believe in the trade, but there might be there might be another leg now the other way before. Yeah, it. Hey, Blake, Blake, if you have a chance, uh, you could go to what Greg and he's gonna be with us in a few minutes. Posted on Halloween. His count on the pound on the four hour chart is pretty uh, remarkable call. So, real nice look if you want to share it. Yeah, here's the here's the uh, here's the pound dollar. Um, and and he was talking about yeah, yeah right resistance there. and then and then big reversal. And that's yeah. exactly what we've seen thus far. And we are we are trading at thirty one uh, seventeen, which which is basically right here. Right about here, right yeah. now. You Great know, call, and, Greg. Yeah, very, very good call. And he's gonna he's gonna be on with us a little bit later, a little bit later today as well. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see what what his counts showing, um, you know, from here on out. Get so, the edge and subscribe. That's what I'm. I'm sorry. Get the edge and subscribe. Yes, yes, get the edge. There you go. Um, so you know that's the pound, and I and and again we we got to watch real carefully here. I, I don't I don't want to beat it up. Other than you know we're we, now we've got to really pay attention to what Mark Carney is going to say, um, and 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 you know pay close attention to what the pound's doing. I mean we've had we spiked up to one thirty two sixty eight and dropped one hundred and fifty pips, you know, since that statement came out. So what we do from here and where we go from here is going to be very interesting. Um, I, you know, and, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to take the spotlight away from the, the pound dollar a little bit. Uh, I'm going to take us over to the Euro. You know, the Euro is still really struggling at this neckline in the, uh, in, in, in the, um, the Euro dollar. I mean, it, the, the big, big neckline here of the, the head and shoulder pattern, we're, you know, probing, that resistance. And matter of fact, the highs today are 116.71, and we talked about the neckline yesterday being at 116.70. So basically, we've tested that neckline and respected it. Like I mentioned to you guys, I have an order to sell, you know, closer to 117. Uh, I canceled my order actually this morning because I, I didn't want to get stuck in the volatility. But it, it, for those of you that are looking for more precise measures. Uh, and, and 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 put an entry order at 116.70 because we've been talking about that being the neckline. You know, you might have been been uh, you know triggered into a trade, which uh, which is good because this is it's it's technically it's respecting the technical levels very well right now on the euro dollar. I don't know if that's going to continue, but it is for right now. the The flip side to that is is if we break above this 116.70 level. And the dollar succumbs to some pressure, um, and the euro dollar goes up. That is something that we should pay attention to because because we have been respecting it so well. So if we, you know, break above this one, uh, you know, one one sixteen seventy, and we start getting to one seventeen, the the question that I'm going to have is, you know, did the dollar did the dollar index, you know, post a false breakout on this inverted head and shoulder pattern. I mean, if we start breaking down here, I'm going to, I'm going to get a little concerned about the dollar. Um, you know, the Aussie, uh, the Aussie, you know, good trade balance number last night. Uh, actually, if you take the Aussie dollar and you just do this, let me, let me take this line really quick. Cause that's not really needed. This, uh, previous support acting as current resistance, um, uh, which is good, but, uh, again, this is like the Euro, dollar if the euro dollar starts to make you know headway and starts to move higher 
Um, what about the Aussie? Can the Aussie break above 77.30? I mean, the dollar itself, it, you know, it's, it, it's not looking, um, you know, super constructive right now. So that's some, that's some, that's something that, you know, if you start seeing the Euro dollar break higher, you see the, the, uh, the, the Aussie dollar break higher. Um, the Kiwi has also been, you know, trying to make its way uh, higher off of these lows. You know, we could see a little bit of a dollar liquidation uh, as, as so many traders, I think, are long dollars at this point. So, um, so anyway, those those are just some thoughts about some of those majors. Let's take a look at the the, the U.S. dollar Canadian. Uh, we've been looking at this 50% uh, retracement. I, I you know I was really hoping that the U.S. dollar Canadian would make one more stab towards 130, which is this is a big, what I feel is a big resistance zone for the pair. Um, I was hoping we'd make our way up there before reversing. We haven't done so yet, but um, you know, it's, it'll be interesting to see if we can make one more stab, but, but this dollar Canadian is actually starting to look fairly weak as well. And speaking of which, here's the U.S. dollar Mexican peso is another uh, dollar pair that I'm paying pretty close attention to. Uh, we're starting to break lower after, this is a, this is a big, this is a big 38%. Um, let me get rid of this really quick so you can, guys can see this pretty clearly. Okay, and let me highlight this fib, okay. Let me do that. That might might clear up a few things. If you look at the all-time high in the U.S. dollar Mexican peso, all right, the the the, the all-time high here, all right, and then we dropped to the 117.40 level. Since then, we've bounced back to the 38% retracement. We've there's been a lot of commentary uh, uh, from um, Banksico up here, and I, you know my my feelings is they're trying to keep a you know they're trying to keep a um, uh, a bid underneath the peso, which could eventually lead to dollar Mexican peso weakness. So I'm keeping a very close eye on on this you know, possible rollover, big resistance zone, 38% retracement. And I myself am starting to you know, nibble short. And I've been, for the last two days, I think I've been in and out with short trades for the last, you know, just, just making a little bit here and there, nothing, nothing super exciting. But this US dollar Mexican peso um, might start to weaken, especially if we see that, if, if we see some dollar weakness come through the market. And uh, I don't think that that I don't think that that's impossible at this point. And it's a really good risk reward if you're looking at a little bit more of a longer term trade. Uh, again, I, you know, looking at a lot of these dollar pairs. I mean, here's the U.S. dollar Norwegian krona. We rejected the 618. Yes, we could be still be flagging. I mean, if you look at this, you know, this chart, this could, you know, still be. This could be a flag that looks like this. Something to this nature and we could make another leg higher. But the, at the same time, where we failed was a very important to me. So given the fact that we've re, that we failed at the 618 retracement, I'm a little concerned about the US dollar Norwegian Krona. And if this ends up being the high and we end up getting a failure down here, that's gonna be a big deal. And that again, that, that goes along with the Okay, what happens with the euro dollar if we get back above 117? You know, what happens with the the Aussie dollar if we get above 170 or 77.30? You know, what if the U.S. dollar Mexican peso gets below 19? You know, these are all you know the U.S. dollar Norwegian krona could succumb to some pressure too. Here's the U.S. dollar Swedish krona. You know, facing a multi-year or not a multi-year, but a, a a pretty big downtrend line is we've got this big inverted head and shoulder pattern as well. So you know, again, I'm looking at all these dollar pairs going. You know, is it possible, you know, is it possible that the dollar, you know, sucked a lot of traders in and now is, you know, it, it sucked, sucked a lot of longs in and now we're going to get confirmation today of more than likely Jerome Powell. And uh, I was, uh, I, I was uh, chatting with another one of um, the traders from my office and and stand by, stand by really quick. All right, sorry about that. Um, 
So another another thing that we have to uh, the, another thing that we have to pay attention to is this you know this dollar and the and Jerome Powell possibly you know being uh, nominated as the Fed governor and one of the things about Jerome Powell if he gets if he gets nominated he we, I was talking again with another trader that we could be in a situation where you know we have another Fed governor that has always voted with. Uh, um, uh, Janet Yellen. So it's, it could be a lot of the same. So anybody who's bullish the dollar right now might get a, you know, we, we might get a, another very dovish or a dovish, you know, Janet Yellen replacement, which is basically like having Janet Yellen, which it could actually weigh on the dollar a little bit. So, um, and then the flip side is, is how about if we get somebody else? How about if we get John Taylor? <laughs> the dollar would actually explode at that if if that was a, it was if that was a thing. And you know, if there's one thing that I think we've all learned about Donald Trump is he could really um, shake things up a little bit, you know, with what the market's expecting and then what we get. Silver might be giving a signal here, Blake. We've had a very sharp rally. It's outperformed gold. Uh, to me, it looks like you want to be a buyer on breaks to 16.80, 16.90, um, a 50-cent move out of nowhere in silver in the last few days. So um, we get through that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, that was a that was a pretty pretty dang good pop. Um, I yeah. and I and I and I did not catch that. I mean, it was just like you know, I I don't trade precious metals that often. Um, no. Yeah, so made a really really spectacular move um you know is it showing us the way i mean is is gold uh you know really showing i don't think they're really showing us much of anything at this point but i well, it's, I, it's I, been a while since silver has outperformed gold and you know and i asked yeah. about that during the interview yesterday and um our guest crack kind of poo pooed it but i know a lot of people believe that whether where the ratio is that it could begin to revert to the mean from where it is now. So. Well, you know, if, if silver is outperforming gold, that's typically pretty bullish for for precious metals. Mm -hmm. Typically, typically, okay. um, and and that's the way that I've always viewed. I've always viewed it when silver's outpacing gold to the upside. It's 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 not a bad it's not a bad sign for precious metals. It's usually the Lake. opposite. Yes. Sorry to interrupt, but just a fast comment. Despite Yellen being considered to be uh, leaning dovish, there's no question about that. I mean, this is how she, she has been, uh, you know, categorized. Um, Yellen um, started her tenure with the DXY being at 81. And despite almost 10 months of a downtrend, the dollar is currently at 94. Uh, bottom line, uh, you know, just looking at the dollar, um, you know, it's quite a lot higher uh, even after 10 months of falling uh, since Yellen uh, took, uh, you know, the chair uh, until today. Yeah, great point. That, is, that, that is a good, that is a good point. Um, but, you know, also uh, you, we're talking about future expectations and, you know, what, Yellen's going to deliver or would have delivered moving forward. Um, and and so, you know, people have started to look at for her the future path of hikes as being on a more dovish, you know, outlook as we are probably near the the top of our of our of our tightening cycle. And so that's where the that's where the you know um that's where it all comes in rather it's not not past performance it's more future looking if you will so but it, you know what i just uh i just saw dale that grega is also in great yes and okay. and hey grega how you doing hey buddy i'm fine i'm just looking at this significant reversal on bitcoin i don't know if anyone watch it but we no, have it, just seen a nice drop on a bitcoin after a spike well, up Actually, it's uh, it's interesting that you point that out. I, I mean, I couldn't have been better at timing that very top right there when I, I tweeted something out about Bitcoin. Um, but uh, it, I, I I'd like for you to if you if you have the opportunity to talk a little bit about it. So I'm going to flip over the charts to you. Yes, yes, sure. Thanks. Oh. 
Great call on the pound this week, Greg. Your yes, four-hour chart. Yeah, nice. Seen a nice move up. Also, Euro pound is also playing out very well. We have seen this fake breakout breakdown actually uh, at Greg, the lows. Yes. Good morning. Any chance oh. that uh, <laughs> because I still see a triangle in the pound. I mean, a short-term triangle. Any chance that B is a triangle and uh, might still push uh, higher uh, towards 133 once again before lower? <clears throat> you mean here that this is a triangle for wave B yes. and we see another push up? Yes, yeah. it's possible, but no matter what, it's still a corrective wave. No, so, no, no, I don't disagree with you, but yes. there is still a chance, right, from a structure yes. perspective. There's a chance. There were uh, plenty of traders who were, especially from an Elliott Wave perspective, they were probably waiting on a spike to a new high because uh, they were tracking an ABC rally. And normally, as you know, Wave C will move beyond Wave A before correction can be finished. But that's valid for a simple ABC pattern, a zigzag. Okay. Once you have a flat correction, then we have some different guidelines. So actually, notice that this first leg was made in three waves an ABC within wave A. So actually the whole structure, okay, was a flat correction. And in flat correction, wave C can complete the structure around wave A levels and not necessarily above the wave A extreme. So I, I think that a lot of traders were probably surprised now by this immediate reaction to the downside. So um, I would not be surprised actually, Steve, if this rally is completed as a flat. Okay, and I was talking about this okay. yesterday as well. So because it's still valid formation, but all the key is here in this first recovery. It was made by three waves. But if we would have a five wave structure, then I would be looking for another retest of these levels because uh, structure would still be seen as ongoing. But as it is right now, we can say that flat correction is actually finished here. Okay, of course, daily close price today will be very important if we stay at these levels or maybe even lower and make this bearish engulfing pattern that is probably now unfolding. So uh, in such case, I would probably look for much, much lower levels. Uh, so at this stage, I would definitely not be acting. Okay, I, I would either wait on this bearish close and, that, and then look for pullbacks because, you know, it's pound. It's probably one of the craziest currencies that I have traded. And, um, you know, you never know, it can be just a spike down and we go back to your levels as a set. Okay, great. Okay. So, uh, regarding Bitcoin, uh, <clears throat> we have seen a strong push to the upside. Um, we have been looking for this fifth wave rally for some time. I have been tracking for a move towards 7,000. Uh, we have seen these levels tested. so. Uh, traders now really have to be aware that we are here in a fifth wave advance of this cycle that began uh, actually big uptrend resumed here in 2013. Okay, so I still think that there is big correction coming in place soon. Probably by the end of the year, we will have some significant top in place. Also, if we take a look at the structure of this blue wave five on a daily chart, you can also see that we have five waves up. What's really interesting today that we have seen a test of this upper, if you zoom this, of this upper uh, channel resistance line here. It's an Elliott wave channel, and normally when you see prices breaking above it, it can cause a strong acceleration to the upside. But once you fall back into this channel, it may confirm that wave five high is in place. Okay, so all in all, I would be really careful here for this week price action. Uh, definitely at these levels, would not be surprised if we see a turn either from here to lower levels or from high, from another high. Uh, but still think that that's potential top zone for, for Bitcoin, at least for the short term. So watch out for a free wave setback. Normally this would take us back to the area of former wave four. So $5,300, that's uh, the zone. Uh, where I would be looking more for retracements once it be, uh, once it will start. Also, here was this old swing high around 5,000. So definitely, that's significant zone that we should pay attention on once pullback starts. Okay, so uh, short-term traders maybe they will have uh, some opportunities here still. Um, if we take a look here on uh, more closer uh, for our chart, then you can still see that the red wave five has a chance for another push to the upside after this 
pullback, but this spike is quite strong, so I'm really interested to see um, how this uh, this day will close, actually. Uh, for a top confirmation, of course, you always need an impulsive five-way drop from the high on a larger degree. So, um, but generally speaking, Bitcoin uh, it made such an extended move that you really don't want to look probably for any trades here. Okay, especially not in investment. As I know, futures, uh, they were approved Bitcoin to trade with futures contract. Is that correct? The CME is going to include it, yes. Yes, but do we know when this will be gone? Trading with futures? Uh, no, no, not sure what when the initiation uh, of that is. Okay, one because... Thing to, one, yes? Sorry, one thing to note about it is that it's not going to involve actually uh, exchanging Bitcoins. It's going to be cash settled. So, um, just just a little detail. So you, uh -huh. it's basically you're basically going to be taking a bet. It's not going to have a delivery of bitcoins or anything like that. Right. You're ba basically speculating on the price versus yes. it, 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 you know, deliverable product, which is a big deal. Yes. Yeah. Okay, but how how this should uh, impact? Uh, you think the, this will impact more? Uh, will bring more investors? To trading Bitcoin because of that? Uh, the, the speculation is that yes, it's going to bring on more investors. Yeah, but on the other hand, there's a lot of people waiting to find ways to short it. So it's an easy way to short as well. I think it's a, I, I'm not, I haven't decided myself how it's going to, I, I see both arguments for both sides. So I'm not, I'm not sure personally. I, you know, I, I, you, you know yeah. what, what inter interesting there is, all these big events are usually late to the market, okay? Always something big when co comes in something new, it's at the top of the market. So um, I'm not really sure if this is the right time to be involved because probably there will be, again, traders, especially because non-professionals are trying to trade with Bitcoin, there, there can be more damage done to their accounts. Yeah, and you know, guys, I, I, I was a member of the CME. I, I may have mentioned it yesterday, but when I was being interviewed, by a bunch of members, I felt like a piece of red meat. Okay, so uh, I know that part of the reason they they they're interested in it. Of course, they want volume, but I, I bet there's a lot of those guys waiting to uh, trade against the amateurs. And the short side is, you know, most people aren't shorting Bitcoin. I can tell you two things for sure. First of all, Bitcoin has a lot of amateurs involved. I mean. Uh, we, we, you know, we, we're seeing uh, on occasion the questions that come in through our customer support. My nephew asked me about Bitcoin last week and said, Dale, what do you think of Bitcoin? It's going through the roof and I hear it's going to continue to go through the roof. I told him, I don't really know anything about it. <laughs> my, my main problem with Bitcoin is the following. The, the only fu fundamental uh, number I can attribute to that is that, you know, we, we had done, uh, we had done like a, um, uh, some kind of a um, uh, you know calculation with uh, with uh, value uh, some time ago, and we knew as a fact that extracting a single bitcoin uh, like a few months ago costed like 200 to 250 dollars in cost. So how exactly? Um, I mean, obviously it's it's all about demand and supply, but. How exactly you get something that will cost you, let's say, $250, uh, to go up to $7,000 besides extreme speculation, uh, you know, it's beyond me. I, I've, I've read all the articles. I, I know more or less how Bitcoin works. Uh, I understand that it can be a useful parallel system, etc. But none of that puts a realistic um, fundamental value to it. So I have no reason to believe that the gap between 250 and let's say 7,000, 7,500 that we reach almost today is not in a big part what tulips were in the 17th century. And that's the big problem I have with Bitcoin. I mean, it might end up costing more, but how do we calculate that? How, how do you know wh when it's at bubble territory or when this, this value is fair? Uh, I mean, my, my, my intuition tells me that this is a bubble, but you know, I, I'm not, I can't predict the future, you know what I mean? And since this is not something that's actually tangible, but on the other hand, it's also not a currency that's, that's representing an economy, which you, you, you can put specific macroeconomic values and say, okay, it's doing better, it's going to go up, it's, going, it's doing worse, it's going to go down, etc. 
you know, it's it, it's a huge issue. Yeah, maybe the demand is coming from people just wanting instead of stashing cash can get the same or even better anonymity without their cash being stolen. And it's a way for people to try and go around governments. There's probably a lot of money in the world that has been doing that forever and they found a new vehicle. What do you think? Yeah, but you know something then, uh, if that's the case, which is very likely, then the crash of Bitcoin is going to come when uh, regulators or governments uh, find that it's, uh, uh, you know, too much of a disruption to the system. Right. And well, then they're going to do something about it, for example. Well, I mean, they've done that before. The hunts, you know, silver squeeze in the okay. 70s. They and changed one, one, Sorry, man, sorry. Didn't want to interrupt. Go ahead, go ahead buddy. One more thing I want to say is that there, there's a lot of people who are buying Bitcoins and cryptos in general to get out of the system. And that's, you know, that's a fair, fair view. I have one question to ask because I used to be a programmer before I became a trader. And any kind of uh, computer system programmers, they're intrinsically lazy people. So my guess is there must be some kind of back door or some kind of access whereby it's not actually all completely, um, uh, how do you say it? Uh, anonymous. Anonymous, yes. You know, I, I, how can can anybody guarantee us to us that you know the NSA, the FBI, whoever do not have a backdoor entry, and they, if they do, they can see every single transaction ever made. That scares me personally. That's that's all I can say. That's all I can say. You know, maybe I'm just putting on my tinfoil hat now and you know being conspiracy <laughs> theorist, but, but you, you have know, one too. <laughs> you have one too. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, let's 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 go back to the real investment world and you know things that we know have you know we, we can evaluate more easily. So, Grega, what what else what else do you have in uh, did, are you looking at at the moment? I mean, what else is clear uh, in your eyes at the moment? Mm. Uh, regarding uh, FX, uh, I am looking at Aussie dollar, and I actually see a lot of commodity currencies that made free wave retracement against the US dollar in the last uh, week or so. So first here is uh, Aussie dollar. Okay, free wave rise from the lows. We retrace back to the area of a former wave four. So to me, it represents a resistance area from where I think we could see a next lag to the downside. Let's not forget that market has turned bearish actually is already trading down since, since September. So I think that any rally will be corrective either of a small degree of, or of a higher degree. But I think that there is a limited upside. Also, what I like about Aussie dollar at the moment is, is that we are testing the swing low from October. OK, so now it can become a very really nice resistance and a new fall. Could, could be said. Uh, not, not only that, if you zoom out in the chart, you will see that 77.40. Uh, because I, I've stressed that a lot of times in the chat room as well and in the analysis, 7740 was a resistance area for a long period of time before actually Aussie broke higher. So it was like a very, very, very significant level. Uh, you mean you high from back from March of this year, then you have back from 12 months. Actually, yeah, 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 yeah. In general, this this whole area, if you draw it as an area, you'll see that it was extremely, extremely significant. And I really do believe that the that the market has memory. You know what I mean? Yes, definitely. I definitely should agree. So, uh, actually, it's interesting that this was this high here, 2016, was November 08. Okay, so I'm very interesting to see how this will play out if we will still be in this region for the next uh, six day or so. Uh, but anyhow, yes, definitely, I'm expecting uh, this market to continue to weaken. We have also seen a um, nice move to the downside on gold, uh, despite silver, which is slightly stronger than gold. Uh, but still, I think that uh, if we take a look on gold, there will be a next important uh, lag to the downside. And the reason is because we have here rise from the lows okay it's actually very slow and it's in three waves we have retraced back to this resistance area here around 1280 so i think that uh, next lag could be to the downside this definitely should help us to continue to weaken also new zealand dollar in a very similar shape we have three wave price from the low actually you can see i didn't update the chart uh, since a week back 
here. Uh, so I was looking for a way four bounce. It unfolded very nicely and looks like that we could see a next leg to the downside. And I would pay attention to invalidation level right here at 7050. 52 around there. So uh, are also a, a resistance. So I think if they roll uh, roll over and start going down again, that's going to help. You know, all 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 these uh, dollar pairs make another push, right? Yes. Uh, yes, exactly. And I also still think that euro dollar is also uh, probably headed to the downside. And the reason is very simple. We have seen a quite a strong breakdown uh, last week. And now since we bottomed here, we are just moving sideways. We haven't seen any significant retracement. All, in most of the time when you see a fake breakdown, okay, that lasts maybe one day, two days, this fake breakout will be retraced in the next couple of days. And clearly this did not happen here on Euro dollar. So I see this as a potential, just a pose that is part of this decline that began uh, on October 26. So actually I'm looking for more weakness here and this is matching up very nicely actually with other uh, with other dollar structures. So dollar in general could see more gains uh, on the longer term side of the euro. I'm still not sure if we topped out here or no, but uh, even if I'm, st I'm bullish and tracking this as a wave four pullback, there is still a room for 38.2% because that's normally where wave four retrace compared to wave three. So there is room for what? Another 200 people decline. Okay, there's also this trend line. We have been talking about this a lot of time in our past webinars. We said that when trend line is broken, uh, it was broken right uh, there. Okay, then this trend line normally um, is our confirmation that we are in a way free. So we have seen an extended move to the downside and now you see a retracement back to this same trend line. Okay, which are normally retested in a way for pullback. So clearly there's room for more weakness before we may continue to the upside. But uh, honestly, I don't know if we are headed higher or going lower, I see maybe chances 50-50. So actually, I don't care based on a short term structure because uh, I see room for more weakness in the next few sessions. But tomorrow is on from payrolls report. So maybe we will have to wait a little bit uh, more before we get a uh, resolution of these whole cycles on the euro. Greg, uh, people are also asking unsurprisingly, of course, uh, what what is what is your view now in indices? For example, they're asking for DAX and uh, SPX, etc. <clears throat> for DAX, I still see more upside. We are in a fifth wave, but this fifth wave is, is getting an extended. Notice that the current rally is much more sharper compared to any previous rallies since market turned up in September. Okay, so actually I still see room for more upside. I'm looking for market to hit 61.8%. It's actually part of this first cycle from the bottom to the end of wave three, uh, measured from end of wave four. And there you have also 161.8% extension of the same move. So actually I'm looking for this market to, to, to reach slightly higher levels. Also, if you take a look on the uh, hourly chart, sharp wave uh, up, slow price action, sharp wave up, slow price action. So uh, there's no reason, a reason to, to watch for any top here just yet. I think there is room for another push to the upside. And as you know, Steve, we were looking but, for... But obviously the, the last leg higher has to be shorter than the wave three because I see that in this structure, the wave one is the strongest yes. one, right? Yes, exactly. And so the I third one cannot be the shortest of the, of the three yes. pulse one. Exactly. So actually uh, maximum, if we make just a quick outlook. So if this was a wave three, okay. Uh, let me change the colors here. So this was wave three, and if we assume that wave four has finished here, then obviously fifth wave should not move above 13,700. So, but I think that there will be top a little bit earlier. But nonetheless, there's still a room for more upside, and then we see maybe we will have to adjust the wave count. Who knows? Because this market is really strong. Um, but um, still, we need to be aware that we are in a fifth wave up looking from September, uh, from since, since start of September. So I'm expecting market to sooner or later to find the top, to complete this blue wave five, 
of a black wave free which run into our FIP resistance level. So we are everything is actually uh, right there which should be based on final pieces of the puzzles when it comes to uh, completing this wave free of a higher degree. Also, if we take a look on the S&P 500, uh, very similar stuff here. We are tracking five wave rise. Uh, from September lows, we see market in a fifth wave. Also, there's a potential uh, this to be ending uh, diagonal. Yes, exactly. You can see here these lines. So I'm not sure if top is already in or we are going higher. Um, clearly, basic technical analysis suggests that we should stay bullish as long the market is trading above this trend line connected from uh, waves two lows and wave four lows. So as long this trend line holds, there is opportunity the market to to retest and finally hit maybe 200 uh, 2600 uh, mark up there okay so i would not say the top is here definitely okay, i don't want to do that we're we're near some <clears throat> some turning points in in all markets i'm, I'm guessing that the yeah. same applies to nikkei because nikkei has gone beyond parabolic i mean it it, it, it yesterday that I was looking at it, I said it here as well, um, it, it had gone up 17.5% in 38 trading days. I mean, the, the, yes, this I know, rate but, of increase but, is but unsustainable. Even, yes, but even if we would take a look on Nikkei and be now 10 days back, we would probably say the, the same. Market is now ready. I agree with you. Uh, that, yes. That's so, why I wouldn't be sure. So, yeah. Yes, it's very difficult to predict and say that top is here, top is here. I don't want to do that. What I want to do is look and just make a new adjustment of the wave count every day if it's necessary, I don't care. I don't mind to be wrong. To me, it's important just to focus and be aware of potential higher targets on stocks, on stock market, because it keeps rising, unless we see five wave drop from the highs. And as long as that's not the case, I will say that we are going up. Even if maybe, who knows, maybe I will tomorrow, I will have to label this as a wave one, wave two, and we are making higher extended fifth wave you know so it's very important just to be aware of potential more gains on the stocks market because you want to follow within the trend and label the charts within the trend rather than trying to go top so uh, i will not say that we are we are topping here because we don't see five waves down simple as that so but so maybe not so much to focus on time maybe we should more fo uh, on price maybe we should more focus on time because uh, in very short time you can get a very huge extended move right so maybe it's more important to focus on the time and i would say that by the end of the year this year we will should probably see some signs of a top in place and a step into a bigger corrective decline that i'm expecting Okay, maybe this one will be very similar to one that we have seen through, through the summer. So it was a two or three month consolidation. So something um, is uh, something similar is what I, I will expect at the start of 2018. Okay, very nice. Um, anything else that, uh, that you're currently yes, looking at? Uh, I can take a look at crude oil. As you know, I have been looking for a breakup, uh, breakout on a crude oil. For a while. Actually, it reached my target. I had a target of 55 because <clears throat> I had a triple confluence there. So um, yeah. since since yesterday that we reached uh, 55, I said that I'm looking for a move down to 52 and a half to 53. And from what I see, roughly, it's you're also looking for a correction, right? Yes, I see a new way for unfolding, and I think that we could see a little bit even higher levels. Probably, probably not this week, but next week since I'm tracking this extended black wave free. So I'm looking for a 261.8% FIB level of wave two, which is my target for wave three. So I will be looking for more upside after this corrective setback. Also on a daily chart, I see this um, market to continue higher within uh, wave three of a higher degree. And the reason of course, for my bullish view is especially this uh, weekly chart where I see completed wave one or wave A, wave B or uh, wave two. So then you should be in a wave three or wave C, which will retrace back to the area of former wave four at 63.20. So I stay bullish here and this head and shoulder formation, I have it here, yes, uh, has a target much, much higher, but I will not get into this because maybe some will say that I'm stupid. 
<laughs> oh no, absolutely not. Actually, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, why not? I I I remember a lot of people <laughs> being talking about uh, oil being at 15 or whatever. Uh, obviously, as always, this happened when we were at the lows. And you know, if you said back then that the prices are going to be back at 55, they they would call you nuts. You know what I mean? Yes. But that's yeah. that's always how the market works. It, it works with extremes. And you know, to me, an extra confirmation was the fact that I, I, I happened to be reading, uh, like, was it yesterday or a couple of days ago, that they, they've now started reassessing, you know, um, banks, etc., have started reassessing their targets uh, for, for crude. So that means that the sentiment is definitely not yet extreme to the bullish side because the sentiment seems to just be um, at the face that it's shifting. So we might have quite a lot of more upside until, you know, we get we, we get some, some extreme sentiment on the other side of the market as well. So I think that, you know, that's not going to be an issue. I mean, sentiment and positioning should still permit for quite a big move higher. Yes, and definitely that technical yeah. targets shows room for more upside, right? So even if uh, we ignore the head and shoulders pattern okay, and focus just on a, um, projected levels for this uh, technical view from a perspective, as I said, 63.20 is maybe the next target. So, But still, that's what uh, more than 10% move. So. Yeah, it, it is a strong move. There's no question about it. Yes. Um, any any clarity with uh, uh, <clears throat> any more clarity? I'm guessing not because they've been extremely tedious. Uh, with um, gold, you said that the next leg is lower, but uh, anything on the bigger structure? I mean, besides the next leg uh, likely being lower because uh, you know the the recent move higher has been a little bit corrective. I mean, uh, but we st we still remain in a, a large range, right? Same with yes. silver. So yes. Triangle yeah. formation, yes, since uh, 2015, still in silver. So basic technical analysis, if we uh, turn down from the upper side of a range, you would expect to turn uh, lower to the lower side of a range. So there is room for wave D to move, let's say, back towards this uh, swing low from uh, this July. Okay, so um, I still see room for $70 sell-off. Okay, that could, uh, that and I know good. that a lot of people are trying to, uh, to, to, to catch the resumption lower for USD CAD. Uh, any, any updates on the short-term structure on the USD CAD and how close we are perhaps to rolling over? Um, we are, um, in last webinar, if you recall, I was looking for this move to continue up into yes. equality level. So we still didn't meet this. I also see this 1.3 is strong psychological level. So I think it could be retested. Now it's just a correction within the This might be a triangle, price. I think. We, we, we might be even be in the triangle. Yeah. Yes. Or it can be just an ABC as a flat correction. So uh, I would watch out on this region around some 50 point zone from 1 to 750 up to. 1.28 maybe that's the level from where uh, we could see a next turn to the upside for wave five okay to finally to hit this 1.3 psychological level so um, on the short term i remain bullish on dollar cat on long term um, it still can be a free wave rally but to confirm either if we bottomed here or we are just going lower i think that we need need uh, simply just more price action i don't want to be uh, i don't i'm yeah. not smart enough to predict too far into the future so yeah yeah because uh, because especially corrective price actions are uh, you know i've i've been saying that uh, you know a long a long time ago not having to do with Elliott wave that's more your speciality i mean with with basic technical analysis as well you cannot predict in advance what kind of a correction a correction is you can not it might be a consolidation. It, it might start as a consolidation and then, uh, you know, drop lower or whatever. I mean, o only in a retrospect you can judge what kind of a corrective move you had. Only impulses are are clear to to interpret. Yes, exactly. So, with that being said, uh, I want to be focused on current impulse, which is unfolding since um, mid of October, and it appears to be incomplete. So, okay. Perfect. So I think we have a guest, right, Dale? Yes. 
Adam Button. Oh, Lord is here. Yeah, he's here, but okay. he's, he's If you're done, we could go. If you, you know. Yes, uh, sir. Yeah. Okay, Greg. Well, thank you, Greg. You know, thank you for crystallizing okay. things for the community today, man. No Thanks problem. for showing up Pleasure. from Eastern Europe, all the way from Slovakia, right? <laughs> yeah, Slovakia. <laughs> all right, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. All right, bro. Okay, Adam, I see you. I'm making you the presenter. Looking forward to talking to you. It's been a little bit. It's been a while, bro. And a great day to have you at the beginning of the month. Wait. Hey, hey there. Uh, hey. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, Adam. How are you? How you hey, doing, bro? Enjoy. All right. Video up there. Yeah. Uh, Looking good. Uh, what's your, you're you're showing show the. Uh, screen here. Yeah, you're showing the forex analytics. Uh, uh, you know, here? thing to re reminder for you to be here every day. There you go. There are some charts. Okay. Let Let sure. me start off with the obvious, bro. What's your reaction to the reaction of the BOE? Yeah, it's um I mean the bar was pretty low but you know the market it, you know sniffed this out and we saw that it, future hikes are going to be limited and gradual and that was not what the market wanted to hear it wanted that doesn't even sound like the door is really open to hiking for a while. Uh, beforehand, about there was about a 35% chance of a hike in uh, February priced in, and that I, is just too high. And sterling is coming down now. I had the same. I, I don't think it's entirely that. I think now you had this catalyst for a little bit of pound strength, and now it's just the Brexit sellers coming back again. I mean, they, they've just been relentless. Um, you just assume that every week there are going to be two or three very ne negative Brexit headlines and you know to try to stay long and withstand those it's you know it's sailing into a headwind and uh, you know the market is just a lot more happy to be short and I think even if there was a bit more of a hawkish signal I don't think it would have lasted more than a few days um, they, the and, Brexit and you sellers have, are selling you have a lot yeah. of experience following Kearney since you know he was yeah in your country and before he was drafted by the BOE, you know, yes. kind of like the and, NFL, and, he was traded. So, right. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy who hates on his own team, but Carney is really overrated. I mean, in England, he's been talking about hikes forever. I think he almost had to hike today just to save face because he's been talking about hiking for three or four years. And it, you know, you, you got to do it eventually, or or you're a joke. But I, I don't think it really saves face much at all. Um, and it was the same in Canada. He was a little bit behind the curve, far too optimistic. You know, just at the tail end of the crisis. Where is he going next? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it looks, looks like a Fed. Uh, looks like a Fed chair would be today. Um, I, I'm I glad you brought that up. Uh, yeah, I don't think uh, Trump is going to pick him, but. Uh, do you think it's going to be Paul, Adam, and it's Paul really, like most people are saying, the status quo, uh, very similar to what we had with Yellen and Bernanke? Right. Yeah, that's the thinking, right, that he's the same guy. But with Powell, I mean, I've written about everything Powell said over the last five years, and, and there's just nothing memorable at all about the guy. Um, and so we don't know as much about Powell as some of the commentators would lead you to believe he is more of a wild card the one thing we do know is he has been anti-regulation especially in the last six months now that that might have been just lobbying for the job because he wanted to be fed chair but i yeah. think he's put in there to be easier on regulation and that's great if, but, if you're a but that's not the fed purview per view is it regulation that's not uh, a fed mandate to be lobbying against regulation is it yeah, I mean, they, they institute, um, supervise a lot of the banks and a lot of the lending. So it oh, is it's okay. smaller banks, and that is that is part of the, you know, it's the, the less sexy part of the Fed mandate. And so there I is see. some room there for him to, to loosen up on regulation. And, you know, it's that part of the cycle that we're in 
<laughs> right now, right? You you have a crisis and then you tighten up too much on the regulation, then you loosen it and you loosen it too much and you get another financial crisis. Okay. So uh, he's also not an economist. Does it, uh, that might be an advantage, huh? I think it's time for that kind of thing. Um, I mean, I don't know if it matters. Matters. I mean, the one thing is it's whatever 300 or 500 or whatever it is, PhDs at the Fed. So you, I guess they run around calling each other doctor all day and they just, they just call him chairman. I mean, oh, it, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't see how that's going to hurt him. I mean, he could do the math. He, I'm sure he can understand the models. It's, it's a little bit of a dumb. Okay. So uh, it used to be a regular feature, buddy, when you would come on and we'd have a conversation. And I've seen so much of your seasonal work end up manifesting. So here we are, November 2nd. Uh, what are you looking at seasonally? What are the tendencies and some of the pairs and instruments that you're covering here on your page? Right. It, in November, it's it's the dollar month. It's a very good month for the dollar on, on almost every front, um, against the Aussie, against the yen, I mean, both sides of the, the carry trade there. Um, it's, it's really good. And and I mean, it, we get some news, and I don't know if it's out now, it's out very soon, supposedly the tax plan uh, from Congress, yeah. and that's, that's clearly the catalyst, if not the Fed, if not economic data has been strong. I mean, November could turn time. into it, a real good month for the dollar. Sorry. Okay. And uh, what would be preferred shorts against the dollar? Would it be uh, now that the pound has tipped its hand, uh, the pound over being short euro? Yeah, I mean, I heard... I heard uh, the guys on before me talking about dollar CAD, uh, that that makes yeah. a lot of sense. I mean, you can make a pretty good argument almost right across the board. I like dollar yen uh, um, if this tax plan comes through because you, you you should still have more upside in stocks. Um, and we're, I'll be watching very closely the capital gains treatment. Um, if there's a cut in capital gains for next year, nobody is going to be selling the winners this year until after year end. So I think Great you have like, like a free roll on some of those, the, the high flyers in, in right. stocks. But normally, you, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, they would defer it anyway, but this is even more, uh, more of a reason for them to defer taking gains and there'll exactly. be less tax loss selling them too. And, and the, yeah, no, no, well, except on the loot, Losers, because you'd get a better uh, treatment on a loser. So you see the losers getting sold before your end. So you're going to have okay. that divergence. Right. Uh, that's well, that's well, not really a trade, but more it, more think, bifurcation. Just what we need more bifurcation. So uh, how about on the uh, commodity front? Uh, I've noticed a nice little quiet but strong move to the upside in silver. Um, seasonally, I know sometimes late fall early winter is usually a positive time for precious. What do you think? Yeah, it is. Um, uh, it's a strong month for gold coming up. It's one of those uh, spots that can withstand and that U.S. dollar strength. Um, it's on the flip side, it's weak for oil through year end, quite weak, in fact, for oil. But but gold, it's good here. Then there's a little bit of a, a bump in December. And then in early in the year, gold is super strong. And that's held, held true for about five or six years. Um, and so that that's one that's up for a little bit farther down the road. But uh, for now, gold is I, I should actually be able to withstand this dollar rally. Um, but you know, there are a lot of moving parts, and the gold chart isn't looking great at the moment. Maybe I should bring it up actually if I'm talking about it. Okay. And uh, as we bring up gold, a lot of people, Adam, have gotten used to keying off U.S. dollar yen. That you know they move uh, counter to each other. U.S. dollar yen and gold, and I noticed, I don't know if it was yesterday, may have been yesterday, that they were both up. It, what could be behind the possibility of that correlation that people are so used to following right now breaking down, or do you think that was just aberrational, that they were both trading together the last it, couple it days? It is a tough one because anytime you, you get that geopolitical worry, you're going to see dollar yen higher, gold higher. Um, you know, it could be a bit of a, it's, I mean, if you have stocks really cooking, uh, that, that can get some dollar inflows and you have gold selling because you lose that safe haven bid. So that is one thing I could see breaking it down. Uh, but I, I think in the bigger picture, you will see it follow along, but in a week to week okay. or a day to day 
cases it, it can disconnect uh, but some... i mean that dollar yen chart is looking awfully attractive right if we get up above yeah. i mean this is not this technical analysis 101 up above 114.50 it's uh to be a straight shot yeah. i don't see why not so above 118 is a possibility for you uh thinking this is the beginning of something major here in the end or just enough to shake out every bear and and, with, and if this that. is true uh the other correlation would be in treasury so if the yen has a nice move to the upside that would most likely pretend higher yields is that true yeah, i don't have the, i don't have the chart here but that i mean dollar uh 10 year yields are the big chart right now and we're right. at 235 down a couple basis points today 240 would was that huge level bill gross was saying that was like the end of the generational bull market in bonds if it went i know gunlack was talking wasn't about it two, 265 was it the number i well, think that was the high deal yeah right for this year but it was just downtrend if you key it oh, off oh i see okay and it cuts out during that and I, I don't have the chart there but yeah if you get to 240 then you can quickly get to 260 and i think 260 takes you up to the top of this dollar yen chart and then you know whatever beyond that and i'm i'm a no inflation guy but you can easily get two or three four hikes in the next year year and a half and uh you know that that's going to hurt the treasury market bad and send dollar yen you know 125 130 um because japan is not moving off the lower bound uh, any time for the long foreseeable future do you think that there's hope uh, for, you know, the banks would love to see the yield curve from flattening to um, begin to, uh, you know, have higher yields on the back end than the front end and uh, and definitely do not want to see it invert. Uh, what do you think is going to be the outcome if we get that many hikes going into 2018? Um, yeah, the, the, growth is, the growth will have to be there and the inflation as well. Uh, if the Fed decides it need, needs to be ahead of the curve and the curve and starts hiking, uh, you know, December, March, every three months, you could easily see an inverted yield curve if, if inflation doesn't cooperate um, or there's some sort of stumble. I mean, right now it, it all looks so good, um, but, you know, they, there could be a financial crisis in China could be some you know these volatility products are are, are worrisome um whatever it is if, if you have rate i mean you can't really invert the yield curve at you know one percent or whatever we're at if but if you get it up at, at two two and a half percent on fed funds I mean, it's pretty easy to invert the yield curve so uh, the risks are just much higher than and i mean yeah. it, I mean, it's what a 10 year bull market. It's got to end at some point, but. Can the U.S. really handle that mass of uh, three, four percent yields on a 10 year as we continue to balloon our deficit? I mean, uh, you know, will the math still work, especially if this tax cut is not revenue neutral? Oh, I don't think there's any way it's going to be revenue neutral. Deficits will go up, but I mean, look at Japan, it's 300 percent deficit. Uh, debt to GDP there. Yeah. I think deficit, I think we're past the area era of deficit uh, Meaning uh, worries. I, yeah, yeah, I, I really Why? believe that. Uh, because uh, we have central bank puts, is that the reason? Well, I think part of it was a little bit overrated in general. I mean, go back to 2000, how, how much debt was there in the U.S. then? And, and everybody was panicking. There was this, you know, this. Oh, yeah. Even back to Ross Perot, when you were in kindergarten and Ross Perot ran as an independent candidate, that was a and 90. Is like you, you know, you have to pay your debts. Well, that's true, but the U.S. has how much in terms of assets as well and how much in terms of the ability to print money, the ability to tax uh, the military that's unbelievably powerful. There is, you know, it's not like someone in the future necessarily has to pay it as long asset prices go up I mean the, the amount of wealth is, is unbelievable and uh, I, I don't see it I, I really think that's the way the wind is blowing is that deficits don't matter and let as long as you can borrow in your own currency which really hurts the eurozone um, but but places where they are, are running deficits are just doing a little bit better and it goes back to politics I mean if and, and Abe as well in Japan I mean there's this push for fiscal discipline there and he just kind of threw it out the window 
And how long has he been prime minister for now? Um, so I think if you want to win in politics, you give up on the deficits and you boost growth by maybe a half a percentage point. Right. And that's the ticket to win. I think if you ask Trump right now, he'd say, okay, would you add five trillion to the deficit if it meant re-election? And uh, that's, I think, the math that, that politicians are doing everywhere and voters are cooperating. That's a pearl, buddy. So I know that you're probably being saturated and hit with, you know, something that, you know, you and I weren't really talking about much uh, three years ago or so, but um, this mania in crypto. Uh, I, I'm sure you're getting a lot of questions and, you know, uh, even people like my stepson are, you know, they're sending me emails. Dale, uh, I hear, you know, Bitcoin's gone through the roof and it's going to continue to go through the roof. What do you think? And I told him I have no idea. So uh, what <laughs> what are you telling people when they're asking about this phenomenon? Well, we, were, we were there three years ago, but um, I mean, and it was the same thing I was saying. I think I think it was about three or four years ago um, in Montreal. There was this these guys opened up this thing. It was the Bitcoin embassy. And these guys must have bought Bitcoin at like five cents. And they wow. made millions and they reinvested in this building that was just like, uh, it was all about how to use Bitcoin and, and using it. And they were these real, well, they were ambassadors uh, on it. And you, I went and met these guys and talked to the people then. And they were so enthusiastic. I mean, they were real true believers. And you just saw that community grow, right? It was this compelling argument. I mean, everyone heard all the arguments and that enthusiasm um, and that it's that true, pure, almost religious belief. And, and that's what's taken it so high. Um, I'm sure it's the same in your community. I mean, if you, if I write something negative about Bitcoin, there's a hundred people on my web, website, you know, calling me names, but, and I, and I think the trade isn't really the fundamentals of it. It's the other guy you're trading on. How much does the other guy believe? And when they believe like they do, I mean, you go to 10,000. Um, and right. I think the, the, the trade right now is a way for that ETF. And until it comes out and that ETF makes it so much easier to invest in and trade in. But it's it'll be interesting to see because the futures launch this week, I see it as a negative uh, because it makes it easier to so buy sure. Bitcoin. You're, you're not actually buying Bitcoin. You know, you're just buying this price index the sort of thing so that isn't going to eat into supply and the arbitrage trade i don't it's not really there um so i i, I see it as a negative but and i and i can see the arguments for other on the fundamental side other cryptocurrencies as as better uh, means of doing transactions i think bitcoin they're is, faster right um yeah. so now you could handle more transactions. The software is more cutting edge. Does right. I think eventually it loses out, but does it get to 10,000 or 20,000 or something But beyond that? I think, I think it's almost a sure shot to 10,000 at this point, having hit 7,500 today. Um, yeah. So, so I, I'm curious when you get hate mail about Bitcoin, what are the negatives that you write about that uh, piss people off? I think one one was that it's it's not a currency, just kind of useless as a currency, as as a way to transact. Um, you know, and it, for you you couldn't for a while there say anything that it wasn't the future. If you didn't say it was the future of currencies and that fiat was was stupid and worthless, um, you, I mean it's the internet, right? But I think now within the crypto community, there is a lot more understanding about the limitations of it and how maybe other cryptocurrencies might be better so now there's this kind of infighting right yeah. about whether it's ethereum or whether it's dash or whether it's monero i you know i don't know the answer tom, but tom in our room said uh, bitcoin is a fancy way to sell copper yeah i, I mean it's just people, people want to believe in it and we'll see when the, there's etfs and, but at the end of the day um you know, it's an amazing chart. I think that's yeah. what it came down to, and, and that enthusiasm, yeah. and, and it's a trade. I, you know, I, I think there's some people who want to buy it and, and hold it for a hundred years. I think, uh, yeah. I think we're going to find that a lot of the long-term holders, 
at 10,000 or, or 20,000, whatever it is, decide that you know it's not a long-term store of value. And when that happens, it's you know back down to 100 pretty quickly. Well, uh, do you think that the governments are, you know, China, tri China tried? Um, do you think that uh, the U.S. would ever try and shut it down? And could they even shut it down? I think it's coming. Um, I really do. I think the year ahead, it's, there will be some um, a foray. And they'll go after the exchanges. They will go after the ICOs, which are, are you know, a lot of them are pretty insane. Um, the, that, that, that I think the big headline, if you're long, that which would be scary, is something like that. I mean, that's really the trade right now. If you look at it on that on the day-to-day -day trade, is is be afraid of regulatory headlines because that's when you get those 10, 20 percent drops, um, whether it's China or Russia or South Korea or Japan or, or who knows where it might come from. And then there's positive risk associated with that as well. Um, but it seems like it, the path is always higher until you get some regulatory worries. Um, okay. And, uh, you know, one of the attractions is anonymity, right? So, you know, people, people that wanted to, uh, that used to go to cash and do tr cash transactions, uh, or, you know, uh, big brother, not knowing everything they do with their money, uh, that a lot of the flows were so that people could have anonymous type transactions. Um, I was talking about this earlier today with Stelios and he said he was a programmer and most programmers are lazy and he suspects that there's a potential backdoor that could blow wide open the anonymity of Bitcoin owners and traders. Do you think that's possible? Yeah, well, I mean, the wallets are trackable, so, I mean, they, there are, I think there are ways, it's when you get it out, it, that's that's when they can track you down, because now they've, they've taken a lot of the anonymity away from exchanges, so, right. to, to transfer out of that is when they catch you, and, yeah, I, I you know, we saw with the wanna cry a hack attack, that they used Bitcoin, and, and I think, we're at, at this time now, when there is going to be a major computer attack, uh, and that's you know worldwide and it's massive and it's a ransomware sort of thing that wants to be paid in, in Bitcoin or some other kind of cryptocurrency and that's probably when the government starts to step in and say oh, all right enough is enough where we're interesting what, what makes you think what makes you think something like that is going to happen because of the intensity of uh, cyber warfare between different nations uh, what what is leading you to think that I think well number one is that we've seen it right it's it's like like kind of the wanna cry was the proof of concept it made money number two is you what you couldn't really launch this sort of hack and bug previously because you couldn't get paid for it um, there were you know you could ask for money in PayPal but you're gonna get caught but now that you have yeah. crypto you can you can it's like it's commercially viable or, or criminally right. viable at least. Um, right. and, and number three, I, I just think that's the, 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 the sophistication of some of these tools that are out there, be it in Russia or wherever they're coming from, is, is intense. And uh, everything's so interconnected. You know, if you, you have hospitals now running everything online, like we saw in the UK during that attack. So that, yeah. I think, um, if that headline and I think you just want to be one step ahead of it if that headline hits um, that there is a major attack underway you probably want to be selling crypto even though there might be a bump during it because obviously people have to pay pay to get you know you have to buy Bitcoin or whatever it is to to unlock your computer or something like that um, then uh, then I think but I think afterwards the regulators will be coming down on that and, you know, I think that's probably going to be a big story in 2018 or 2019 or whenever Okay. Well, Adam, you know, you contribute so much every time you're here uh, with, you know, your views, both fundamentally and technically. I'd like to give you a chance to talk about Forex Live and, and what you and Greg and your team do there and what people could uh, take advantage of to, you know, uh, check out your service. So why, why don't you take a few minutes, maybe go to your website and and talk about what your mission is at Forex Live. I know that you guys are so active on social media, and I pay attention to your tweets and 
uh, you're a great content provider because uh, you, you really come from a trading background. So, I mean, the best content, I believe, comes from people doing it. And I know you and Greg are. So, yeah, yeah, thanks. So good mic there now. Um, I mean, we do, it's Forex Live's live analysis and news of, of uh, data as it comes out. The site updates live at forexlive.com. And whenever headlines cross, um, I mean, we've got every news service in the world. And as headlines cross, we deliver the news and interpret it and analyze it in, in real time. Uh, so whether it's the Bank of England decision, what this means, or the Fed decision yesterday, um, we are talking uh, about, for traders, what it means. Okay, so Bank of England's out. Uh, watch this level. If it's negative, um, and, and here's why it's negative, and here's why it's, or with the Fed yesterday, here's why it's probably not as bad as it seems. Um, and so we are standing in there uh, 24 hours a day around the clock delivering news as it happens very, very quickly. And that's, we take a lot of pride in that and, and talking about what it means. So, uh, yeah. Okay. For the opportunity. Yeah. Well, yeah, what a great a service. Tools on site, technical analysis calendar. And, yeah. uh, yeah, we've been doing it for, uh, oh, almost 10 years now. So, um, yeah, it definitely a bit. Yeah. I mean, you know, you've been doing it since you were about eight years old now. No, I mean, 10. <laughs> I'm kidding you. So, yeah, Adam, you, you look great. And thanks again, buddy. You know, uh, I'll, I'll invite you, as long as I have breath, I will always invite you to join our community because you're one of my favorite guests. And I always come away with insights and confirmations of my views. And you really provide a great service by uh, being a giving spirit and coming here to face most of the time when I ask you. <laughs> <laughs> it was day, today's a crazy day, so uh, you know, it's go, going to be a fun one. Always fun to come on and uh, and hear your little pearls of wisdom there, Dave, So uh, for PKL. So uh, yeah, have, have a wonderful one. I'm, I'm really looking forward to some of these, these tax numbers that come out. I mean, we're all a little bit tired of the politics. What are you though. looking for in the NFP for tomorrow? We'll wrap it there, Adam. Oh man, we're already ending on farm payrolls Friday. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm eager to see the revisions really to uh, to September and, and see how that comes out. It's typically uh, August, September might be revised higher. Uh, you know, I don't really think it matters that much. We've got a skew on the wages that came in from the hurricanes that might come back out. So my right. guess is it's a dollar negative on the headline, but I think it'll be a lot like the Fed decision in that, you know, maybe 50 pips at a downside but you want to pick it up on something like dollar yen um, because like I said it's a great month for for the dollar so that might be the dip uh, to buy for dollar longs I really appreciate I really appreciate you being here today Adam and giving us uh, your time uh, hope that you have a great NFP day thanks for all your views and your seasonal views um, I'll be looking to the dollar for the long side throughout November and I'm not going to fight the yen anymore. You just gave me some more confirmation to do it. So good hunting, my trading warrior brother. And too, brother. Uh, until next time, uh, may pips rain down on you and Forex Live and everyone who follows you. All right. All the best. Thank you. All right. So that's it. We have the NFP tomorrow, my friends. I just want to show you Euro Swiss before we go. Uh, looks to me like it's uh, starting to gain some mo to the downside. Still think that it's a possible, a very good trade. Uh, we failed at 61.8. We start taking out 162.20 or so. I'm looking for some acceleration. I'll see everyone tomorrow for the NFP. Investing.com viewers are always welcome to join us. And I want to thank you for your attention. Good hunting the rest of the day. And remember that it doesn't end here at Forex Analytics, that we have our trading room for our subscribers, and there's plenty of ideas floating around all day, all afternoon, and even into the evening hours. Good hunting, my trading warrior brothers and sisters. And above all, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. I count working with each and every one of you a blessing. Adios. You're very welcome, Corrine, Elena, Kevin, Ronit. See all you action junkies tomorrow for the NFP.
You're welcome, Gino. Glad to meet you.